Hello, I'm hand spinning teacher Abby Frankemont, and I'm here today to teach you a very, very basic way to start spinning your own yarn. We are going to go through a couple of different fibers, talk a little bit about identifying the fibers that you've got and what they should act like, and then we are going to teach you how to make yarn with a pencil. So, a number two pencil and some fiber. And this is the fiber that we will be using, but I'm going to show you a couple of other pieces of fiber that have some problems. This fiber is spinnable, but it's very hard to tug apart. It's become lightly felted. It takes a lot to pull it apart. So that's not awesome. That's not our top pick for learning to spin fiber. So we're going to start with this. This is Corydale wool combed top. That means all the fibers are aligned parallel. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to tear a strip off the side. And set the rest aside for now. And as you can see, when I tug on these fibers, they drift right apart. They come right apart. So they're obviously not yarn yet. So to begin with, you can kind of go over this and tug gently just to move fibers apart to feel where things actually slip past each other. And I'll explain why this works. It's because of the staple length of the fibers. To show staple length, I have here some freshly shorn wool locks. Right here is the end that was attached to the sheep, where it was shorn or cut, and here is the end where it was cut the prior year. So this is as long as the sheep's wool grew in between shearings. And we typically call this the staple length, S-T-A-P-L-E. And basically what it means is the typical length of the fibers in your mass. You can really see what they are here with this wool lock right in front of you. With the dyed fibers that have already been processed, it can be a little harder to see. So the way you check the staple length is to grab just a few fibers, sort of from the end of the mass, and pull them out, and then take a look at them. And you can see that they're about this long. So if you're holding closer together than that, you can't get these fibers to slip past each other. You need to be holding around a staple length, if not a little bit more, apart so that fibers will keep drifting. Now, fibers drifting apart, you've probably noticed, doesn't make yarn. What does make yarn is if twist goes into them and then locks them together. I'll show it again with the white fiber. Drifting, it just drifts apart. But now if I put some twist into it, you can see it gets thinner, and eventually it doesn't pull apart once I have enough twist. So we're going to show you this method of doing this very quickly and easily using just a pencil. So here is our strip of fiber, and here is our pencil. We're going to hold the pencil like this. We're going to put one hand out in front of us. This can be either hand with your palm down. So your thumb should be facing the inside of your body towards your middle. Okay, now place the pencil in your hand and kind of grasp it like so. Like here, we are horizontal and now we're vertical. Horizontal and vertical, and this will become important later. Now, place your thumb gently against the shaft of the pencil. Place one end of your strip of fiber in between your thumb and the pencil. So now that we've got our thumb holding the fibers gently to the pencil, I'm going to kind of go like this and measure from here to here. In other words, from my hand down to my elbow. We're going to call this a cubit. And I'm going to pinch right here by my elbow. And then that allows me to have about this distance, which is kind of uh, if my shoulders are, if my hands are about shoulder width apart, that's kind of that's kind of where we're at. So this is a good way to measure this if you're looking for a ballpark uh, on how far you want your hands to be out before we start our next step. Okay, 
So now that I've got that measured distance, I'm ready to take it to the next step. Be careful though, because if I kind of stretch and pull while I'm doing this, everything is going to just come right apart. So I'm going to set up again, make sure I've got around that measured distance, around that cubit, and I'm going to just wrap. I'm holding one end to the spindle, uh, to the stick, the pencil, and I am just wrapping. Now notice that I am not pulling and my fingers eventually come in contact with the pencil. My pinching fingers come in contact with the pencil. At this point, I turn vertical and I twirl the pencil and gently tug off the side. And as you can see, some twist has gone into these fibers, locking them together. So now I can scoot my hand out a little bit further and that twist kind of follows and then go back to this wrapping maneuver. Vertical. And this time when I come off the side, I'm not going to pull past this first fuzzy bit. And I'm going to leave what's already there being water under the bridge, yarn that's spun and wrapped around the stick. I'm going to wrap again and pull off and you can see even more twist has gone in. Now holding this gently, if I relax my grip and gently slide, you can see that twist follow my pinching finger over here. And I've made more yarn and moved the twist out into new fiber. Now I'm going to wrap again. Turn. Come off the side. And then move that out into new fiber. And this is making very thick yarn very slowly, but this also works faster and under other circumstances. So let's say that I pile up a whole lot of twist in just one little length. See how it kinks back up on itself? That's normal and it's supposed to. So it kinks back up on itself. What I can do now is put the pencil down, just rest it, bring my other hand up here, and so long as I am about a staple length apart, as long as my hands are about a staple length apart, I can pull these fibers out thinner. And then I can let that twist move out into those new fibers and make thinner yarn. So why does this work? Well, I'm going to demonstrate using a common piece of household technology. You've probably seen some of these devices before. If it is mounted on a bracket so that it rotates, then what pulls off the side is a flat sheet. If you roll so that you're winding on from the side, again, what you get is a flat sheet. On the other hand, let's suppose that you put it right here and you kind of pull off the end well now, as it comes off the end, twist is going into it. Whether you go off the end or around the end, you will be adding or subtracting twist. So same thing here. If I don't do anything to change what's going on, I'm, this is going to twist up as I wrap. And so this is basically just taking advantage of those simple premises in order to put twist into fibers and turn them into yarn, like we have here. And so, now that you've got some yarn wrapped around a pencil, there are still more steps. If you're looking for more information, you can find lots more on my website at abbeysyarns.com or in my book, Respect the Spindle. Thanks for watching.